jumper here. We saw yesterday, if you didn't hit this second jump just right, it was big nose into the uh, cement time about 50 yards further down the track, wasn't it? Yeah, you're exactly right. I mean, if they're trying to, if they try to go off the second jump flat on the mat, then it's going to nose down really hard. We see the wind blowing right here. Yesterday, the gust picked up a couple of times. If they breathe it, get the nose up, and the wind gets underneath the nose, it'll hang the nose. They'll drag the rear bumpers. So it is quite a tap dance. You're exactly right. And uh, as rough and tumble as these trucks are, it really requires a lot of finesse to get one around here at speed. And if there's a truck out there that you think really is pretty and looks best than all the rest, take its picture now. Yeah, yeah, probably won't look like it this. It might when not it's... look like this when we're all done. <laughs> so there's going to be three, uh, basically nine laps run under anger. They will run three and a half laps, throw out a caution, and bunch the field back up, give the trucks a chance to cool off. They'll run another three and a half laps, throw another mandatory caution. That'll happen down after turn number six. There's a jump down there. And, uh, and then they'll run the last three laps wide open, everybody going at it. Typically, we would invert the entire field. There are two. There's actually four rookies making their debut, but two of those rookies have decided that they want to start scratch. I think a wise call on oh, yeah. their part. So uh, if you're not clearing these jumps and the fast guys are coming, it can get ugly quick. Yeah, and I love that idea of throwing that caution like that and bunching everybody back up makes for a spectacular show. Yeah, it is three short races. The fast guys are pretty much in the back. They'll try to pick their way forward. Whenever I say that, there's seven drivers in this field, seven, eight drivers in this field that are certainly capable of winning out of the 12 trucks, four rookie starters. So, And this is just race one of two. We're going to do it all over again tomorrow. That is exactly right. Uh, points accumulated from qualifying yesterday, the first moto here today, and, of course, the second moto tomorrow as we kick off the 2023 season. Yep, that's a big key. This is the first round for the championship. In fact, the reigning champ is here with us again, isn't he? He absolutely is. That is Chris, uh, I'm sorry, Gavin Harlan, who uh, who won this championship a year ago. Congrats to him. And run this series a number of times and just was surrounded by bad luck here and there. Otherwise, should have won a couple of other championships, but he put it all together one year ago. We'll introduce you to our starting grid here in just a couple of moments. There's a look at the reigning champ. That is Gavin Harlan behind the wheel of the number one VP-backed machine. Gavin, the fourth winningest driver in the history of this series. So super, super talented. No question about that. Strength of three wins a year ago. And we're up there on the front row. I'm going to get started here with our starting grid as we are took, uh, we're taking a look at one of the series veterans here. On the pole in the number 57 thrill cast entry is series veteran Bill Hines with a win and six podiums. This is Bill's 10th season with Stadium Super Trucks. On the outside of row number one in the number 50 Gravel King's back truck is Scores 2020 Class 5 champion making his SST debut out of Encinitas, California. This is Trey Hernquist. We go back to row number two behind the wheel of the number five BDI Geyser entry from Newport Beach and current points leader in the unlimited view as well in the SST. This is Bruce Benquist. We go to the outside of row number two, originally from Southern California, now out of Carolina, and the number 51, Bill Stein Chevrolet entry is the multi-time off-road champ and current Pro 2 racer, Ryan Beat. Let's go back to row number three. Our next driver made his debut here in 2017 and is a four-time off-road champ, driving the number 957 CMI Precision Machine entry from Anaheim, California, is Miles Cheek. Outside of row number three is a three-time stadium super truck champ and third winningest driver in the series history, son of four-time EMSA GTP champ Jeff Brabham and grandson of three-time F1 champ Sir Jack Brabham. This is Matty Brabham. And now your fast four. 
Starting on the inside of row number four is a two-time national champion in his third season of SST, missing the championship one year ago by just 33 points. Driver of the red, white, and blue, number 28, Continental Tire Injector Dynamics entry, this is Robert Stout. Outside of row number four is the son of Robbie Gordon. One year ago, at the age of 13, he became the youngest winner in SST history right here at Long Beach. Now, at the ripe old age of 14, driving the number 77 Continental Tire entry is Mad Max Gordon. And our fast two. Inside row number five is the reigning 2022 champ who earned his first win here in 2018 and is now the fourth winningest driver in SST history. Flying the number one plate on the VP Fuels entry, put your hands together for Gavin Harlan. And your number one qualifier one day ago for the 20th time is the man that started it all. He's a two-time champ with 29 wins and 90 podiums in the series, driving the familiar number seven Day Glow Orange Speed Energy Truck from Orange, California, Robbie Gordon. And to round out the field are two rookies making their debut. And row six is the number 69 TFH Hire entry of Josh Thomas from Brisbane. He's the 26th Australian and 130 different driver overall to compete in SST. His father, Brett Thomas, made his SST debut back in 2015. And to round out the field, it is the number 23 Kibbe Tech entry driven by David Bernstein, who cut his teeth at the dunes of Glamis, ready to have some fun here at the Grand Prix of Long Beach. That's it. That's our lineup here, 12 trucks strong, as we kick off round number one for the Speed Energy Stadium Super Truck Series. Time for some high-flying action. We are closing the foot crossings just to let everybody know. So where you're at is where you're going to have to stay for the next 30 minutes as this race continues. Ralph, you've been here a number of times, man. You know how exciting this stuff is. These guys in the back, as we talked about before, will have to pick their way through some of the slower traffic. They'll have to deal with each other as well. And at the end of this, that's final three laps, that's those shootout laps, man, it is absolutely on. It is one of the highlights of the racing weekend whenever the stadium super trucks show up, wherever they might be. The fans can't wait to see it. Look at everybody lined up here along Shoreline. They know what they're about to see, and they are ready to get these guys slamming and banging and flying through the air here in the streets of Long Beach. It's going to be a great show. As we talked about before, uh, this is the 11th year for the series. Uh, well, I know we'll be at the Nashville Grand Prix. I think they're looking at Road America this year. They just announced a deal with Crandon International Off-Road. So that big Memorial Day weekend, mm -hmm. we will also see Stadium Super Trucks there with a race of champions. Rumor has it, $100,000 to win. That'll be a big one. That's going to be spectacular. Crandon, of course, such a tremendous event anyway. That's one of those events that every race fan should put on their bucket list. Man, what a place. So the way this works, ladies and gentlemen, they will throw the green flag. Everybody will take off here pretty much at speed, but the instructions are to be smart through turn number one, get around the fountain, and then the gloves come off and they go racing. And Crandon, about a million miles away from what you're experiencing here today in Long Beach. Polar opposite, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Both equally exciting. Oh, and just as much of a fun party. Taking a look there at the number 57 through Quest truck there of Bill Hines. He will lead everybody to the fountain. Turn one. Explicit instructions in the driver's meeting to not disturb the flowers. Yes. <laughs> it has happened here before. So oh, yeah. The message is, uh, has been put out loud and clear. A lot of potential for it to happen again. Here we go. We're underway. Green flag flies. We are racing here 2023 with the Speed Energy Stadium Super Trucks. Great start from the inside, too, Ken. It seemed almost like the rest of the field was half asleep there at the green. Big jump, maybe a truck length or two. Yeah, Bill Hines is no fool, man. He is fast as well. I mean, we had a couple of podiums last year. Likes to qualify in a slower pack. He says, man, I can't beat the real fast guys, so I might as well be slow and qualify and see if I can start off at the front of the field and hang on. Well, and he's, he's done a pretty good job of it. And he's going to get to break away right now. 
And they all got through the fountain area just fine. We've had a lot of issues with those alligator teeth around the racetrack here this weekend, but today with these guys, not an issue at all with these trucks. Yeah, you know, they added those curbs. They were talking about that with IndyCar, and uh, I said something to Robert Stout. He said, yeah, we won't even feel them. Yeah. <laughs> here's, here's a good move up the inside. That is Matty Brabham there and trying to get underneath Miles' cheek. First time over one of the jumps here over on the back side of the racetrack. Matty Bay, yeah, gloves off here, man. We're racing now. It is on. Stout right there behind them. Then Max and Robbie. That bright yellow green type truck there. That is Miles side by side there. Hard Stout now trying to get around the outside of him. Big hard braking zone right here. And look at these trucks just trying to get themselves woed down, making their way towards shoreline. Stout Miles Sheik battled viciously back in short course off-road days in the UTV category. Both of them, by the way, national champions in UTV. Little contact there with Stout and Miles. Stout trying to get it gathered back up. Both of them off the jump side by side. Neither one of them are afraid. Oh, boy. Looks like Stout might have got the spot right there trying to follow Matty Brabham through, and that's what he's got to do. Brabham's going to get up front first. And they're going to have to hang with them. And we saw it right there, that first trip down shoreline at full anger. When they hit that second jump here, Ken, boy, it really a couple of nosedive about 50 yards out, and it was a little sketchy there. Yeah, and these guys, when they hit those ramps side by side, they move a little bit. The ramps I'm talking about. Yeah, so right. It's just a bonus, uh, something fun there for the truckers. Oh, and one in the wall. That is Bruce Benquist. We talked about him making his debut here. And unfortunately, things going wrong there as he was trying to exit the fountain turn. Bill Hines out front. He was one of the ones that went nose first off that second jump here on shoreline. And I'm wondering as hard as he hit, if he might even have done a little damage to the tire or the suspension. That might have encourage that off there in the corner. We saw Stout nose down hard yesterday during qualifying, hard enough that he hit the front bumper and bent the supports. So yeah, these guys were hanging it out a day ago. It looks like the one truck of Chris Harlan able to get around Miles Cheek. Miles Cheek, as we talked about, has not been in one of these trucks since 2017. So it takes a little bit, and he's just surrounded by the fastest in this series. I promise you, Miles Cheek is loaded with talent, but He'll have to settle in today and learn what this truck wants and be ready to race tomorrow. Oh, oh baby. Big moment right there for the 50 truck of Trey Hernquist. Yeah, and he's going to pick up that left front. He's right. Whoa, back down. Stout on the outside of Bramble trying to find that spot around the hairpin. Yeah, Stout's in that red, white, and blue truck. Breathing it just a little bit. Nearly tagged the back bumper of Bramble. These guys punch a big hole in the air, so Stout looking to sniff some of that crap right there. We'll see if he makes a move towards the inside. Gravel knows what he's thinking. Gravel dives way down to the inside to pick up the spot. That is Ryan Beat that Gravel is underneath. Beat and Gravel side by side through turn number one. Stout trying to follow Beat now to see if he can get underneath there. They all get single file around the fountain. Well, that is one really strong grouping right there of three drivers between Beat, Brabham, and Stout. Yeah, no question. I mean, a ton of championships there. Oh, yeah. And all three of those drivers. Some In a wide variety, variety of motors. That is exactly right. From sports cars to off-road. Motorcycle to cars. Yeah, I mean, everything. Ryan B with a former motocross and supercross kid. Yeah, for sure. Factory test rider. Really yeah. I mean, talented, talented. Robbie Gordon back there in that seven truck also lingering as he picks up a few spots. Brother of Stout again. Stout taking a look there underneath Ryan Beat. Couldn't make it happen. Of course, Ryan Beat, the brother of uh, well-known motorsports broadcaster Chris Dibby. Uh, I always heard that they were related. They are brother and sister, that. yep. Once again, you can see them side by side. That is Gavin Harlan now taking a look at the outside of Stout's truck. Gavin Harlan trying to close the gap. See if he can pick up another one as they go around Look the carousel. Stout looking inside there. I thought, I thought he was going to have a shot there. Yeah, Stout a little loose there as they all go nose to tail here in the hairpin. And look at, Robbie look at Robbie on the outside. On the outside, you guys are going to stack it up. Robbie Gordon picks up a spot around Gavin Harlan as they all stacked up to the hairpin. 
Great veteran move by Robbie down there in the hairpin. Yeah, he knew it was coming. You're absolutely right. Smart, smart racer, no doubt. I'll tell you how much everybody loves the action here on Shoreline with these stadium super trucks. Our announcer's position has been empty all week long. It's been just me and Terry and maybe one or two other folks. We got a packed house up here now. Yeah, not empty anymore. I have no idea who three quarters of these people are. But they're having fun and that's great. So we got Hines, Gravel, Beat, Stout pushing Beat right there. Sure and is. And it's Robbie Ford right there behind Stout, followed up by Gavin Harlan. Okay, we're going to see the first break coming here soon, right? Yeah, I would think that. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see it this lap, to be quite honest with you. I thought, oh, and Robbie Gordon taking a look. Stout said, Melf, I know what you're thinking. I'm going to try it myself. Stout gets into the back of Ryan Beat a little bit. That unfortunately upsets Ryan Beat. And then Stout and Gordon both go by. I don't see, there's the caution flag. There so it is. Both of them looking for that spot. Ryan Beat not happy with that one right there, but there was a lot of racing going on behind him. Stout trying to protect that position from Gordon. Unfortunately, tagged the left rear of Beat, and Beat picked up a banner along the way. So this is going to stack everybody back up again, and then we'll go back to green here momentarily. And then uh, something to think about here, ladies and gentlemen, whenever they're done with this race, they all go back to the same pit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which sometimes can prove pretty interesting. Same portion of the locker room in the truck to get changed out of these driver suits and attempt to cool down and forget what happened. Yeah, the, the conversations can get colorful. So that's three and a half laps. Caution flag comes out, as you can see there, after turn number six going into the jump. They'll come back around here, cool things down. They'll come back to the hairpin, and then it will be Bill Hines in control of the field, and he'll pick up the throttle just before the first jump. Pretty good bet a lot of dinner plans are going to change after this one. We'll see how things go here for sure. By the way, how about Bill Hines doing exactly what he wanted to do, which is holding off some really fast guys. Not easy to hold off that 83 truck. No, no, no. Matty Bravel, ninth year with the series, three-time champion, 2018, 19, and 21, 18 poles, 24 wins, 76 podiums. He's as tough as they come. Coming through the hairpin. We'll pick things back up here for another three and a half laps. Max Gordon back there behind All Ryan. right. Here we go. Back at it. Stout right on the back bumper of Bravel. Hines with a great jump right there. Stout close enough. We'll see if he can take advantage of it here in turn number one. Here's pushing Bravel. Is he going to make the move? Bravel goes down to the bottom to protect. Stout looking outside. Is that just a fake? Hanging, hanging, now trying to think about the inside. Matty doing a good job of protecting that. Gavin Harlan inside of Robbie Gordon there, trying to get the spot back, but Gordon able to close the door. Yeah, Robbie carried just enough speed in there to get that truck in front of him. Gordon, of course, in that bright neon orange speed energy drink back machine. Bill Hines with a fabulous restart there. I almost wonder if something happened there to Matty. Maybe he spun the tires, was in first gear, and spun the tires out of the hairpin. Well, Whatever it was, I mean, a little Hines, bit of gap. Hines was so great at the start of the race to begin with. He's really been on it today. Got his reflexes working, that's for sure. Stout with his mirrors full of that number seven truck as Robbie Gordon carries the left front tire. A little side landing right there. Tries to set oh, he's right there. Stout, he's going to make it happen. Robbie picks up another spot. Turn number seven, they're headed down the back straightaway. So that puts Gordon up to third now, moves Robert Stout back to fourth. Brabham is next in line for Yeah, and look at Robbie Gordon. That, that protection mode right there, he goes down one lane to protect the bottom to keep Stout from getting another run. That jump there actually sends him off a little bit sideways, doesn't it? Yeah, they try to go off of it sideways to set themselves up for the entry of that carousel turn. Back to shoreline right here in front of the pack grandstand. And I do not see Bill Hines. I think something happened to Bill Hines. I think Hines went off at turn number nine at the end of the long back straightaway. So Bravo goes to the lead. Gort now is second. Stout is third. There's a look at Bill Hines a little bit deeper in the pack. So yeah, definitely a moment there. And you can hear the crowd screaming. Boy, it's Underneath Stout goes Gavin Harlan. 
He's now trying to hang on to the spot. Much like Gordon did it, it's going to do so. Stout and Bradham had a moment there a couple of years ago. Stout went for a ride. Same scenario, but it was closing lap in the last segment. Things get a little different. Now, how do you, how do you approach this? Can you get aggressive and go and try to gain the spots knowing that when we do this next break, we're going to move some people around a little bit? Well, there's no question. These guys at the front, they're going for it right now. They know what happens. I mean, they want to be set up in that, that kind of a wide turn there for Gavin. wonder what happened right there, but he lost a little bit of ground to Stout. But yeah, these guys at the front, these top four, five, six guys, they're on the gas, man, all it's got. A lot of times they say, you know, they want to save the truck, there's brake fade. No way, man. They're going for it right now. I mean, you've got to go for it if you're going to catch Bradley and Gordon. Remember the tires, the brakes, everything on this truck, they've used it all weekend long. You don't get to put new stuff on over the course of the weekend. Gordon's sitting happy right now. He's good and comfortable. He might be taking care of his truck. Stout needs to close that door. Then it's Gavin Harlan, and then it's Mad Max. Got to make it last. Here we go again. See that caution flag come out here pretty quickly again that bunches everybody back up. Stout not able to close the gap there on the top two just yet. The distance between him and Harlan stays about the same throughout that lap. And Robbie seems to be content right now. With that said, Gravel's not an easy guy to get a run on. No. He's got about a truck length over Robbie right now. Just about halfway done with this race here. Maybe a lap past the halfway mark. Nine laps in anger, three, three, and three. Boy, Robbie really sailed it off that last jump there. Yeah, no caution flag there, so next time around we should see a caution after that jump. The breeze here on shoreline blowing straight across from the paddock side, across shoreline, over to where the folks are in Grandstand 27 over there. Fortunately, not blowing upstream, up the middle of the racetrack, because these guys are really putting a lot of underside of that truck exposed as they come off these jumps. Yeah, no question. We saw that happen yesterday a couple of times. Really get underneath the nose. Robbie with a nice tight line right there. Oh, Stout with a big moment off of that jump. Got it gathered back up. Hit the second jump. I don't know how he did that. And you hear the crowd screaming. It just scares you to death. You it sure does. Out, man. And a lot of these drivers, and the fast guys at least, taking the left side of this second ramp here on shoreline, as they know that truck's going to float a little bit towards that right side wall so they give themselves as much space as they can when they land to gather back up and continue on straight down the track. So if uh, if we have followed the laps correctly, we should see a caution flag here after turn number six. Making their way there through turn number five. Just trying to pick up that spot if you can before you get over that jump so that you have that spot for the restart. It looks like Gordon is going to stay in line behind Bravel. He's closed up, though. He's gaining some ground on him. He's he less than a truck right length there. away. And caution flag is out. So Bravel hangs on, followed by Robbie Gordon, then Robert Stout, Gavin Harlan, Mad Max. Miles Cheek doing a nice job here in sixth place. Those five in front of him are no joke. No, and he's got, there seven. I was going to say, he's got five of the fastest guys in the business in front of him and Ryan beat on his tail. Yeah, and that looked like it might have been a little rear bumper action. We saw there for the number five, the 23 went for a ride as well or spun that thing around. That's Dave Bernstein. Bernstein making his debut out here. Just goes to show you, you watch these guys in the front, you think it's easy. 
Right. You watch the you watch the guys making their debut. You see, it's anything but. Yeah. Well, it always looked easy when Michael Jordan was shooting the basketball too, yeah. right? And I still can't make one. <laughs> There's a move that Stout had to make to protect a spot. Unfortunately, gets into Ryan Beat right there. That was not intentional, but Beat unfortunately got the brunt of that. I promise you, not happy about it. Nor do I blame him. There's the five truck, a little bit wide there for Bruce Benquist. Look at the height. Crazy, right? Gavin, oh, uh, Ryan beat and Ryan Ryan just Look at that. Destroyed Jim the front, front end of, of that thing. Truck up into the air as they come around the hairpin. It's going to be Bravin to start off the final three lap shootout. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Who's going to win the first photo of 2023? with a nice run on Robbie Gordon. Sure was. He got a great jump. Brabham got a really good jump, too, and he put about a truck length and a half between him and Gordon, and Stout was all over Robbie as he got into the throttle. Stout on the back bumper of Gordon. We'll see if he can make it pay. Goes way to the outside as Robbie goes down to protect. Getting that speed energy machine blowed down. Max Gordon pushing his way up into that top five if he can. Yeah, look at Robbie just slowly creep up in that in that garden turn. Carried a little bit of mid-corner speed, but Bravo still maintaining that gap that he gained on that restart. Robbie does a great job of finding little bursts of speed in places the rest of the struggling to get. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's what he's always been good at, right? Like yeah. rolling the center of a turn almost anything Absolutely. he's in. And that little bit makes the difference. Enter the corner, truck and a half length back, and the next thing you know, you're right on the guy's bumper coming out. That is exactly right. Gavin Harlan closing the gap there on Stout as well. Stout side-loading that thing, coming off that jump there. Stout really battling with that thing. Man, he is fighting with it. Max behind Gavin. There's Beat. Ryan in that 51 truck. Stout going down to the bottom to protect. Two hungry dogs right behind him. And Gavin's going to go to the outside. That's going to line Gavin up to the left side, going around the carousel. Max into the back of Stout. Looked like just a little bit, maybe just enough to loosen him up. Gavin's going to get the spot, goes into the top three. Back out on the front straightaway. Gravel driving away. Still trying to gather that one back up. Yeah, the crowd absolutely screaming here as they watch everybody go down front straight away off these doubles. Look at Miles Jeep there, Bill Hines, Ryan Bean just ahead of him. So Bean, Jeep, and Hines. If you have issues with commitment, this is not your series to be a player in, right? Absolutely. You have to fully send it every time here. Yeah, it really is. And if you don't, if you don't send it, then the truck just doesn't fly right. It doesn't act no. right. So it's what you got to do. You got to bone up, man. Closing in on 10 minutes to go here. Yeah, Bravo's still up front, uh, or the laps. Either way it goes. Yep. So uh, that one in the book. So I'd say two laps to go here as they make their way back around. In the heartbreaking zone here at nine. Here's Max Gordon on the inside. Yep, he's going to take a look on the inside of Stout as well. Stout just not able to really accelerate hard out of turn number seven. He's been passed on that back straightaway a couple of times. Leader's coming back around to start and finish. Should be two to go. Stout with a big nose down effort right there, stays in the throttle. Mad Max on the back bumper of Stout trying to find a way around. Miles Sheep oh. in the spot. Oh, Lord. Boy, it just takes your breath away. Every Absolutely single time. Absolutely takes your breath away. 
And the hard part for us here in our broadcast booth is where they land is just out of our view. We're blocked by a tent over to our right here. So you see that truck start to nose over and you just cross your fingers and hope it lands on all four. Yeah, to listen to the crowd, you think they all go over. Right. <laughs> Ryan Beat is leading Miles Cheek here in this battle. That is a battle for six. There's a look at Stout and Mad Max. Max all over the back of him here. As you've watched Max improve as a driver, where do you think he's getting better as he's now, as you say, the ripe old age of 14? Look at this move right there. He straightens it out, gets down underneath Stout. Stout opens it up, but too much. And that allows Max to make a run. Max almost tags into the wall, loses a little momentum. Stout trying to stay right there on him, keep the pressure in. The biggest thing for Max, keep in mind, 14 years old, is confidence. He has so much confidence after he won this race a year ago. Well, he sure attacked that section of the racetrack with a ton of confidence, didn't he? And that battle just back behind him. Here they come again. Coming up through the white flag. If we have counted our laps right, we cannot see the flag stand here. And they have fanned out. I think that was a checkered flag there. They did Second wave the check, but that's out, it. So it's going to be Matty Brabham that grabs the win. Robbie Gordon will take second. Chris Harlan with a nice move there to get around Stout inside of the top three. Keep in mind, Robbie Gordon qualified first, picked up three points there. Harlan qualified second. He grabbed two points in qualifying, so they'll add that to their total here today. Then Mad Max in fourth, who qualified third. Robert Stout in fifth. Ryan Beat, Miles Cheek will be there in seventh. Trey Hernquist and Bruce Benquist in eighth and ninth. Bill Hines to round out your top ten. Then Josh Thomas and Dave Bernstein to round out the field. And the great news, we get to do it all over again tomorrow, Ken. Absolutely. Run down here and take care, of, take care of some podium fun. You go do that. Stay dry with the champagne, and uh, we'll see you back here tomorrow. Good job, man. Great race. Porsche Carrera Cup North America will be up next for those of you here in attendance at the 48th running of the Acura Grand Prix of Long Beach. Their first race of the weekend. Before that, I'm guessing we're going to have a little two-wheel action from Robbie Gordon and a bunch of smoky burnouts by the time they come back around. Grab him on his victory lap here in Long Beach. Working his way around. There he goes up on two wheels. All right, shoreline, here comes your winner, Matty Brabham. Around the hairpin. Let him hear you. The winner, round one of the Stadium Super Trucks. Up on two wheels for you. There he goes. Well done, Maddie. All the way around. Making Dad and Grandpa very proud. up those Continentals a little bit.
And here comes Robbie Gordon on two wheels for you, Shoreline. Let him hear you. There he is. The man who dreamed up all this craziness. All right, they're making their way over to the victory podium area and Ken Stout will be there momentarily and we'll introduce you to our top three finishers here today in race number one. <laughs> 